Welcome to On The Chain. So, Chip, well, the, before you Shermanator, get there, the Shermanator. The Shermanator. The Shermanator. <laughs> Let's jump Nader. right into that first. Let me make jump sure I select. The Shermanator. We go. From <laughs> the Shermanator has always been very, very pro crypto, as we know. He's oh, always been a, a big That's... supporter of the crypto space, huge supporter of XRP. Um, just loves it to death. <laughs> Absolutely, Jeff. You know what I just noticed is hang on, is this the one? It's this easier to go after the small fr fr fish than the big fish. But the big fish operating the major exchanges did many, many tens of thousands of transactions with XRP. You know it's a security. That means they were Ill illegally operating a securities exchange. They know it's illegal because they stopped doing it, even though it was profitable. So if they know it's illegal. Jeff, this guy is so Jeff far. Schreck. First of all, let me, hang on. Let me, let me do my best Brad Sherman. They know it's illegal. He's got that what? perfect, like, like if Joker, like if the Joker lived long enough from Batman to like, to, to get to a point where he ran for Congress as as let's say the Shermanator, this is what he'd kind of look like, Jeff. He'd kind of look like this, with this, this kind of a smile. What is that's up kind with of, that smile? You know, you know, it's like they did it. It's illegal. And they knew it. <laughs> it's very strange. Holy, everything very, about very, him is everything about him strange. It is a very odd thing. And you know, the funny they thing knew is, it was a security chip. Well, listen, when you get to when you, when you get to the point of where he's been around for a long time, he just says stuff to tweak people because I don't even think he knows what. You know, on, like other people around government, doesn't know where he is potentially right now. So we'll listen well, to the rest of this. Well, Chip, you do remember that um, when they when he came out, uh, you know, strongly against crypto, it was also uh, determined that some of his biggest supporters yeah. were within the bank lobby. Of course right. they are. Yeah, he's gonna. <laughs> hey, dude, go. To, here's the marching orders. Go crush crypto. And then you know, Jeff, I just. Before we get into the rest of this, a lot of people are talking about the whales are selling a massive amount of Bitcoin. Listen, the whales know when to sell. They don't sell at the bottom of the market, okay? But you know who might? Central banks trying to promote their, you know, trying to, they don't want the market to do well. Let's see. Other things that come to mind, which you can probably, which I don't have to say here, but you can probably guess at some of the other people who might not have a vested interest in crypto doing so well. No, Chip, are you saying and, that the uh, you saying that the whale is no one to hold them? And they don't no want to fold, fold them. them, no one to walk away, and guess what? They don't want to run. <laughs> <laughs> Great song, <laughs> Kenny Rogers. <laughs> Let's listen to the rest of uh, Brad Sherman, Rep Sherman here. <laughs> Let's do it. You know it's illegal, and I know it's illegal. I hope you focus like on that. on that. Uh, and then um, uh, finally, uh, we have yeah, Tether, yeah. which is. Broke the, in, in, a mutual, a money market broke. mutual fund in every way. Dude, um, you're broke. It broke it's a buck. money market mutual um, fund. Tether. Uh, can you, I, I realize you're reluctant to talk about individual matters, but can you tell us mm -hmm. why you want after Terra, but, uh, but not Tether? Yeah, it, it would be inappropriate for me to comment on who we're going after or not going after, but I, I understand your concerns and we've added resources to our crypto assets unit uh, to to look at uh, issues that put investors at risk, including the issues you've raised in your questions. Add fortitude and courage. Yeah, add fortitude and courage. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jeff, what I've come to the realization is on um, with, with, uh, with Shermanator and any of these people, these hearings are completely useless. You want to know why? Because you can always say this. Well, did this happen? I, yes or no question. They go like, oh, I can't comment on that right now because this, this ongoing litigation, we just can't make a comment on that right now. You're like, okay. Warren Davidson and especially Tom Ever. By, by the way, Jeff, have we mentioned both of them have been on the chain? Have we mm. mentioned that before? Wow. And actually, if you go to our website and you go to onthechain.io and you go to the search bar and you type in Emmer, you type in uh, Davidson, you know, guess guess what's going to come up? Oh, yeah. The interviews that we had with both of them. Yeah, that was awesome. Very, you know, good. and it's great that they're pro crypto and they came out swinging and you just have to love it. So I think it's in order. And we'll, and we got some tweets to talk about uh, the Shermanator and that and that too. But let's get to this. Let's get the Tom Emmer first because Tom oh, Emmer yeah, was Tom this Emmer. is pure fire. Spot on. Chairman Spot on. and uh, Ranking Member Heisinga for hosting uh, this hearing today. Mr. Grawl, you frequently acknowledge that public trust and confidence in our capital markets has eroded. In fact, on October 13th, 2021, you stated, quote, 
The decline in trust undermines the investor confidence needed for the fair, efficient, and orderly operation of our capital markets. Put simply, if the public doesn't think the system is fair, they are not going to invest their hard-earned money. Close quote. I agree. But time and time again, you place the cause of blame for this erosion of trust almost squarely on the shoulders of industry participants and companies. Mr. Gruall, the SEC is in no way blameless here. Chair Gensler's political regime at the SEC, carried out by its Division of Enforcement, has been characterized by a focus on using enforcement to expand SEC jurisdiction at the expense of public resources, public investment in our country, and public trust in our markets. It seems clear to everyone, except maybe those at the commission, that the SEC is not regulating in good faith. Although many sectors of the industry have grappled with the SEC's politicization of regulation over the last 14 months, it can be seen most clearly when it comes to the digital asset industry. Take, for example, industry sweeps. As you know, industry sweeps are not novel to the digital asset He's like, set the alarm just in case you don't go over on time. I want to know the midway mark of my speech so I can right hurry there. along and get it all in. You got to like this get young lady. Look, look at the, the, the young lady point. in the background. She's like, oh, he had the alarm going. I can't believe yeah. it. She has, that, <laughs> she has that weird look on her face, right? Yeah. I was like, oh, not I love again. what he says about the industry sweeps. This, no, he, boom, this is like fantastic. Let's yeah, he's, he is on fire. On fire. Nails everything. It's so concise. They don't have a lot of time. It's not like you have an hour of questioning. You just have like a very short time. And then you yield your time. You can reclaim your time sometimes, but you have to just, otherwise they cut you off at the buzzer, especially when you're landing a really good point. To the digital asset industry, they are a series of voluntary document production request letters as a regulator sends to everyone in a given industry who is similarly situated or is involved in the same type of activity. Mr. Gruall, does the SEC Division of Enforcement do industry sweeps? We do uh, industry sweeps from time to time when we have industry. Thank you. The here. answer is yes. I reclaim my time. Are there currently mm -hmm. any industry uh -huh. sweeps underway? <laughs> so I can't talk about uh, investigations. You you can't talk about it legally, it. or you won't talk about it. It's our policy not to confirm or deny so investigations. So you won't talk about it. All right. What do you do if a company, sir, cannot respond to a sweep letter because they're not in your jurisdiction? If we. Uh, issue a voluntary request for information, uh, there's not much we can do. We can proceed with the subpoena and then a subpoena enforcement action. So uh, you do extra jurisdictional requests then? Voluntary requests uh, are just that. They're voluntary. They're an important part. Again, of sir, I'm not asking about the request now. I'm asking about the people you direct those to. There are some that would be within the SEC's jurisdiction. There are some that are not. My question is, and I think you've confirmed it, that you do uh, industry sweeps to extra jur jurisdictional uh, uh, market participants, people you do not have uh, enforcement authority over. We, we subpoena individuals and witnesses who, who may be in the market, market participants. Are, are they within request. your jurisdiction and without outside of your jurisdiction? We're not limited. Okay. By our jurisdiction, when we're collecting evidence, we lead, we follow the evidence wherever it leads and to whomever it leads. There may be we're someone who doesn't limited. work in the industry. So who might have information I would I would say, sir, go after them. I would ask you. I, so you do uh, extra jurisdictional work. Uh, some would argue that that's not appropriate. But Mr. Gruall, has Chair Gensler ever directed you, or to your knowledge, asked any of your colleagues to make it a bloodbath for companies who don't respond to a sweep letter, which are voluntary? Mm. No. This is where he hits it. Interesting. I yes, it's totally voluntary. Based on it. voluntary. Remember the voluntary, voluntary through enforcement. Mm -hmm. We become aware that Chair Gensler has, in the past, directed the Division of Enforcement to send a sweep letter to a particular sector of the crypto community, designed to jam them into a violation that is allegedly unconstitutional. And if any company does not respond to said sweep letter, which I'll reiterate, as you've said several times, are supposed to be voluntary then the SEC would make it a, quote, bloodbath for them. If true, I imagine such a tactic would significantly erode trust between the public and the SEC. Here's the problem. The SEC isn't interested in clarifying what areas of the crypto industry fall under SEC jurisdiction. We know that because FinHub, that you've referred to, the SEC division focused on crafting crypto regulation, has essentially dissolved under Gensler. Nonetheless, while abandoning exactly. good faith attempts 
clarify how to clarify how the commission's existing authority applies to digital assets. The SEC is hell bent on expanding the size of its. This is a this is the money shot right here. This is this is where he does the mic drop right here. Let's just listen to this again. This is me. The shock and awe. Shock and awe. Unleash. Unleash. uh, Rep Emmer, let's go. Assets. The SEC is hell bent on expanding the size of its crypto enforcement division and using enforcement to unconstitutionally expand its Boom. jurisdiction. Under Chair Gensler, that. the SEC has become a power hungry regulator, politicizing enforcement, baiting companies to quote, come in and talk to the commission, then hitting them with enforcement actions and discouraging good faith cooperation. Understand, sir, there is a new day coming. Thank you. I yield back. Boom, a Jeff. New a day new day. day. From- a new day coming. A you know what that day coming? You see that sad face like there? That you know what that new day coming is? Clown. It's called the midterms. That's what that's <laughs> called. It's God. called it's called the next election cycle. That's the new day coming. Because when the oh when the God. when it flips, there's gonna be different kind of hearings, and they're not gonna be oh, gentle, no. <laughs> and they're not gonna be like, well, geez, what did you have for breakfast today? Really? Did you have bacon and eggs or just eggs? I mean, that's. Yeah, he was phenomenal. The Alchemist, Tom Ember from the top rope. Boom. Boom. That's it. Just, just <laughs> like that. Cow. That guy didn't even know what was going on. Let's jump into this. This is Warren Davidson uh, here. Hopefully uh, we can clarify some of the things here. I just want to clarify, you know, A, I think enforcement's a very important function. And I also want to clarify something too, Jeff, that, yeah, M- Mr. Warren Davidson was on the chain. Sorry if we didn't mention Warren that. Warren Davidson was on the chain, and yeah, we did mention. Yeah, okay, if good. We didn't, <laughs> if we didn't mention it. Chip, Tom Emmer was also on the chain. All right, well, good. We stay with the on theme the here. Chain. Io, and you can see Warren Davidson and Tom Emmer. And that was what was the one? So, so Warren Davidson, we dressed up for, and then he was he saw ours, and we were always wearing t-shirts and stuff. So he dressed down, and we were wearing like suit jackets. Yeah, that was <laughs> man. He comes I'm like, in hey, goes, we're interviewing. He's like, what are you doing, man? I see you guys wearing t-shirts. Now you're like dressed up. And he was like, he was wearing like a polo shirt. Yeah, we, that happens, well, Jeff. Respect, respect. Let's listen in. For the SEC, and so thank you and those who are committed to doing it honestly and ethically as part of our government at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, but fundamentally, are digital, assets, are digital assets exempt from treatment as pump and dump scams? You know, we've seen pump and dump schemes involving digital assets. How many uh, enforcement actions have been taken by the SEC? Again, I'd have to provide you that information at a later date. I know. I'd appreciate that. And, and frankly, I'm curious why some of the biggest ones that look from an outsider, like probably pump and dump scams, don't get targeted. Why are they selectively? I mean, seems like some things are given a pass and some things are targeted. What's the criteria for targeting? This is the part where he was thinking in his head, well, Wall Street, bu- wait a minute. Don't say Wall Street, Gary, it's Wall Street buddies. <laughs> Yeah. Don't say protect the big banks. Don't say that. Protect investors, capital formulation. I mean, but he's the enforcement yeah, okay. guy. Right? Here we go. He's, Here we go. he's like, some get a pass. Let's see. What are you talking about? Head of enforcement. ETH, maybe? Okay, let's listen then. <laughs> there, there's no selective prosecution. We, we have to balance the risk that we're seeing with the resources that we have, and we have a number of investigations. Maybe the big ones take too many resources to go after, so you just say, well, we'll they'll get a pass. No, I'm, I'm very proud of the work that the 1,300 women, men in my division do. They don't give people a pass. They hold violators accountable. Okay, let me um, run a hypothetical scenario by you. Say an SEC, SEC official gives a speech at a conference, and the official begins, of course, by stating that, quote, their views are their own and not necessarily those of the commission. Anyone who's ever heard an SEC office uh, official speak would know that this is standard and they would not interpret it, uh, the speech as legal guidance. However, let's say that the SEC f- official consulted SEC staff and perhaps even ethics directly to assist them in writing speech or giving guidance. Under this scenario, would the written speech uh, still be considered personal views of the individual wow. and not views of the commission? Uh, respectfully, I can't answer that right now because that. that hypothetical is a real scenario that's playing out in litigation. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it is what, a rip- what litigation would that be? <laughs> that would be the rip- Ripple litigation. In Ripple XRP. Edition. So w- is it true that Director Henman submitted his speech to ethics for approval? Again, I can't comment on pending litigation. Oh, my God. 
What's That's the point then, brutal. Jeff? Yeah, I can't comment on litigation. <laughs> That's it. It's the best thing. Get in trouble. On, on the on. In hot seat. Holy cow. That, you can't was, that was good. You, just you know, the funny <laughs> thing is just, you just can't comment on it, Jeff. Just not, there's nothing oh you can potentially comment on. Dude, they're, they're crashing and burning. Yeah, big you know how the saying goes, you know, when they're you just kind of keep giving them enough rope <laughs> and, and just uh, let them do their thing. And that's what they're doing. These guys are imploding on a regular basis. They're just, man, despite themselves. But you know what? You can't you, you can't, you know, continue down these uh, these paths. No, is, I mean, it's very, very bad. And it's it's against, you know, the fabric of this society. And they're beginning to wake up and realize <laughs> that. It only goes so far. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.